over here, this is the most important part. This is what's known in Hebrew as the Pakal Cafe. Hey guys, Lev here from Agilite. Today I want to run through my personal plate carrier setup, give you guys a sneak peek into some upcoming pieces of gear, and show you kind of my thought process when it comes to how I set up my gear for a sort of average day in Miloim. So Miloim, for anyone that doesn't know, is uh, IDF Reserve Service. So now I'm in Khativa Hamishim Chamesh, which is the 55th Paratrooper Brigade. Um, and what I do there is I'm, uh, the, I'm a light machine gunner. I'm like a forward light machine gunner for the patrol unit. So uh, I'm not always issued a machine gun though. So this is my rifle loadout. This is something that I'll uh, wear when we're doing obviously rifle training and rifle range. And if we're stationed somewhere where a light machine gun is unnecessary. So let's jump right on into it. First of all, this is an Agilite K19. I have a, an AG3 placard in the back, attached to the AG3 placard. I have two pincer single pistols. So this is just a prototype. This is actually a multi-purpose pouch. You can see here, I have one pistol mag over here on one side. And on the other side, I have the optional flap and I have a multi-tool. This is my backup multi-tool, it's a Leatherman. Um, I unfortunately have recently lost my main multi-tool. It's a... Uh, I'm very sad about it. I don't want to talk about it. It was, uh, it was my baby. Over here, I have an AG1. Uh, I just like to keep it all, all AGs. It's kind of nice. Here I have a multi-purpose pouch. Uh, in this case, you can see by the X, that designates it as a pressure bandage, right? It's like a pressure. So in here, I just have a Israeli bandage ready to go. Over here, I have, you can see the O. This is a Velcro tourniquet dangler. Keep your eye out for this also. So this holds uh, cat tourniquet. Now, when I show up to Miloim, they give us a bunch more tourniquets. So I put extras in here and one on the bottom usually. So mags, mag, multi-tool, bandage. Over here on the side, I have a knife. This is a Benchmade uh, Nimrivus, I believe. I've had this for a while. It's uh, beat the shit out of it. 99% of the time, what this gets used for is spreading peanut butter or cutting open bread. But but it's here as a tertiary liner defense so that if I can't use my secondary, I can just pull it out and go to town. So that's nice. Definitely feels cool, which is 90% of the job. Down here at the bottom, I have a six pack and I have a little dangler for the gloves. Here on the side, I have a pincer single. This is uh, just an extra, extra mag. Oftentimes I'll keep um, either in this one or in this one, blank rounds if I have a muzzle device fitted for launching either rubber, rubber bullets or gas grenades. So I have another grenade over here, by the way. Inside right now is just a, a used training grenade, but there's a thing here. I can pull this and get this out with one hand and then toss it down over here to the belt. Here I have my personal sidearm. So my unit in Midoim doesn't issue sidearms. So most people bring their own sidearm. Now this isn't a typical handgun that you'd bring uh, as a secondary weapon. This is a Mossberg MC2C. It's a nice gun. It's a little bit more compact than I would like for this setup, but I'm very comfortable with it. I have a ton of rounds through it. I have a TLR-7A on it and night sights, and I, lo I love it a lot. So this holster I actually custom made for it using some parts from other holsters and just molding the Kydex around it. Here I have a nice thigh strap, which accentuates my right buttock, which is very, very important. Um, you know, when you're out in the field with the guys. Here on the knees, I got the Arc'teryx kneecaps. I love these guys. I've worn these my whole regular service. And these are, I think, my second pair or third pair. I've actually repaired these ones. I put on new elastic because the elastic is the only thing that wears out. For me, some people think that these are a little too thin. For me, they're more than enough just for, uh, just for taking that knee and just giving a little bit of extra comfort and avoiding smashing your knee on something sharp. Um, if you're on pavement for extended periods of time, it's not going to be as comfortable as something thicker. But for me, the added benefit of just the weight and not feeling it at all. By the way, if these get full of stuff, you just do that and go back up. The, ad, the, the benefit for me just is overwhelmingly positive. So I love these guys. All right, let's go into the six pack. So here on the side, the gloves inside the six pack. So front pocket, I keep a couple small things in here. Okay, I have some batteries. I have two double A's and I have one of these short boys for my uh, pistol light. I keep these wrapped up in, uh, in two ways with electrical tape. So there's one wrap that goes around it and then each one has a wrap over the um, positive and negative on each end that just makes sure that, that there's no way they're gonna bump up against something and lose their charge. So that's super important. Um, here I have just spare in-ear 
earplugs. What do you call these? Honestly, like these have uses beyond the range. Uh, if you have guys that snore like uh, like we do, um, here this is something that I haven't seen a lot of people carrying, but it comes in super handy for me. So this is actually a bicycle multi-tool. So what this has here, it has like a Torx uh, uh, six, right? It has a couple Allens, it has a Phillips and a flathead, and it has a spoke wrench. But you obviously don't need that. But this is super useful for just those weird small bolts that 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 come undone, uh, whether it's on your weapon or night vision or some, some part of your gear. So it doesn't take up a lot of space, it's pretty light. I keep it in this little just uh, elastic thing just to keep it from bouncing around and making noise. And I keep that in here. So this, this thing save my, saves, my, saves my ass all the time. Um, saves me from having to go to the um, armor or something. So in here, inside, I have two things. So I have, first and foremost, a headlamp. It's just a uh, nice and easy Petzl Tika, super reliable. It's got a, a whistle. Um, if uh, one of my battle buddies comes out wearing like uh, super short shorts or something, I can use this. It uh, comes right out of the shower. Here on the inside, this is a pro tip. What, what we do is we take one of the batteries and we flip it around backwards when you turn off the headlamp. Uh, nothing more annoying, a few things more annoying, than getting to the field and going to take out, take out your headlamp and the batteries are dead because it's been like turned on accidentally. So this is the, basically the easiest, most foolproof way. Flip one around, it can't turn on now, and you're good to go. So I keep that guy in there. Oh, oh, the green thing, I almost forgot. So this is, this is the most important thing on the front of my plate carrier. We'll get to the back after. But this, this is the difference between painful conscious existence and the most comfortable 10 minute nap you'll ever take while people are looking for the range officer or a staple gun or something so you can start start doing something this is an inflatable pillow this is also a, this is also a nice handy way to check your lung capacity almost got it so there are a ton of times in the military where you have like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, who knows how long of just dead time um, where you're waiting for someone else to sort some shit out. Every time I go to the to Midoim, there's like, they're in such a hurry for us to get there early in the morning, sign on all our gear, get our weapons, go to the range, and then there's either no range officer, no, no ammo, no targets, no stapler, no staples. It's like, uh, it's, it's always some ridiculous thing. So we just end up waiting around. When I was a younger man, I had no, no trouble just putting my head down uh, on like uh, on my helmet or something. But now in my advanced age, I prefer the, the comfort of the, the fleece on this side. It's just, it's just so good. So this is highly recommended. Plus it's a good lung capacity test. If you have someone with like a punctured lung, see if they can blow this up. Either way, it'll be funny. Um, <laughs> I'm not a medic. Don't do that. Um, yeah, so this is obviously uh, one of the things that's going to... Now the downsides of this system are obviously increased jealousy, um, at, both from males and from females. You're going to be getting a lot of attention, some of it unwanted. People might try to steal it from under your head while you're sleeping. So just be aware. You know, you're going to have to have to fight for what's yours. So I take this, just keep that in there. Just a lovely little, lovely little bit of bit of home, you know. Okay, right, up here I have a little tiny Sunto compass. Uh, if we're doing, if I'm doing more serious navigation, I'll sign on to a, like a larger compass. But this is just really handy for getting your bearings. It's always good to be able to quickly tell someone uh, what your position is, what direction you're facing, figure out what wall of the building you're facing if you're inside a building. Uh, over here, Hydropack uh, Schlucker, we call it in the IDF. Um, but uh, just hydration bladder and it just has this little tab here. In here, I usually keep like my phone because uh, you always have to be on Reddit 24 seven. Otherwise, what's the point of wearing a plate carrier? Um, now let's take it off and get into the back of it. All right, so back beaver tail, I usually keep, uh, if, it's, if it's colder weather, I'll usually keep either like a, like a green kefia or uh, like a fleece or something in there for a little bit of warmth. I put a lot of snacks in here usually. I don't have any right now, which is a shame because I'm a little hungry. Uh, opening it up, here I have an EDC organizer. I have uh, the, obviously the water bladder in here, so in protected place. I have glasses, 
super important eye protection. Usually I have two pairs, like light and dark, and I just switch them at a certain time of day. Over here, this is the most important part. This is what's known in Hebrew as the pakal cafe. So um, pakal is like your individual designated gear loadout for something, and cafe just means coffee. So this is my coffee kit. It's a little bit more advanced than most people carry in the IDF. Most people go for like a black Turkish coffee. Personally, I'm a bit of a hipster, so I go a little bit overboard. I, uh, now this is something I carry if I'm not going very far, right? Obviously I'm not gonna be carrying a hand grinder if I have like a, like a huge backpack on and I'm in the field for two weeks or something, I'll just pre-grind coffee. But I have a hand grinder. I have some nice freshly roasted beans. These are from El Salvador. I have a stove and a filter. So this is super fucking useful. I'll put this to the side for now. Okay, so moving along in here, I have an EDC organizer thing. Right now there's not a lot in it, but um, that's obviously because this is like a very basic setup. You get to the, get to meet the and they give you more stuff. It's also very mission dependent. Uh, so what I have in here right now though, is just this like uh, right in the rain that I've had for a long time. What I use this for is notes for navigation usually, or just notes in general, or uh, sometimes like uh, product sketches if I'm in the field and I have an idea or something. So what I have here is just some Pentel uh, permanent markers. Over here I have a protractor for navigation, and I can use that to mark on a laminated map. Uh, I don't have any maps here because we're given maps before missions and we give them back after because they're uh, classified. So this is super useful, nice to write in the rain. Oh, I have another protractor, sweet. What else is in here? Oh, more earplugs, nice. Never have enough earplugs. Last thing in here that I keep is a little repair kit. So um, this is just a little bit of peace of mind. In here I have a lighter wrapped in uh, thick, wide electrical tape. I have some paracord, I have some thinner cord, I have zip ties. The nice thing about zip ties is you can cut them at an angle, either with a knife or with a multi-tool, and then you can use them basically as their own needle to roughly, very roughly, stitch up a torn piece of uh, piece of um, fabric, piece of textile. Um, and I have a bunch of like random replacement buckles, so that hopefully I'll be able to get the job done if I need to. Like all kinds of buckles that you can push in without um, having to sew around it. So that's super useful. Comes in handy more often than you'd think. And I just keep that in there. It's shiftzuled in. Shiftzul is like a tie knot to something. So it's just clipped in right there. And I designed that in a way that it's very slim, goes right along the bottom, doesn't take up any room. So keep that down there. And that's it for the back. Um, you guys want some coffee? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, guys. Um, show us your uh, plate carrier setups. If you guys have any questions about, about this setup, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try to answer. Um, if you want to shit on me for having uh, too much bulk in the front and not being able to go prone, um, I had no problem going prone on your mom last night, so.